Okay, so it's probably the single most common, well, no, that would be Rolex availability. The second most common whinge you hear on the internet for watch people is, oh my God, not yet another steel integrated bracelet, blue dial sports watch. I actually think that criticism, that weariness, that complaining is entirely misplaced. And instead, it should be celebrated, it should be embraced. We should just accept that this is not only a natural, but a good thing. I'll tell you why. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. The moment one person came up with a good idea and another person wanted it, a third person decided they wanted to make something similar to that. You can go back as far as you want. You can look at any art or design school that you want. Let's go with Impressionism first. In 1845, J.W. Turner was stepping away from realism and playing more and more with impressions and light and shade to produce his works. That didn't really go far for him and he ended his life in ignominy. But he had a successor. In 1872, Monet released what is often regarded as the first Impressionist painting and then we got this and so much more. Why did we get that? Was it because artists were lazy and that they didn't see where to go and they, they all just jumped on what Turner and Monet did? No, they didn't, because that's not how art works. It's not about stealing. It's about they saw what someone did. They saw that other people kind of liked it. They saw that they could play with it and do that in their own way, and that is how art and design works. Give you another example, but this time from a car space. You know, we begin life one day, someone comes up with the idea of putting a slightly bigger engine, slightly uprated suspension in a plain old everyday Golf. That leads to the Golf GTI Mark I. In the 1980s, that just exploded every brand was starting to bring out um, GTIs, hatchbatch, small hot hatches. That continued through the 90s as a new generation was born, and it continues today to be an incredibly popular genre of designs. Does that mean that Mercedes-Benz in producing a hot hatch in 2021 is copying roll, uh, Volkswagen in the GTI Mark I? No, they're just moving within that same genre, playing with it, giving themselves their own version and saying their own thing in that space. Exactly the same thing happens in the watch space. People see what one person has done, see that it's starting to get popular, that there's a, a space in the market that people want something like that, and then they create their own version of it, tell their own story about it, or in the case of Zenith, tell their own joke about that idea. Okay, so for example, let's start with the obvious one, the Royal Oak. The Royal Oak comes out in 1972 and is immediately followed by all of this, all of these different kinds of uh, blue dial integrated bracelet steel sports watches. Why are they there? They're there because for the same reason that you got BMW and Sayat and, and Lancia and Peugeot and Citroen hot hatches after that original Golf. You've got it for the same reason that you've got all of the impressionists like Monet and Van Gogh and all of the others following Turner way back when. It's because they see what other people are doing, they see what the audience likes and they come up with their own version of it. What you're asking when you say don't make any more watches like this is you're not asking for them to be more original. You're just asking them to be idiots. You're asking them to turn their backs on something that the audience, the buying public, the art consumer has clearly said they want to see more of. Why would they do that? Why is that sensible? How does that do anything useful for us in the watch community? 
Because the important thing is, it's not like this is all those brands are doing. Look at Zenith, for example, they're doing lots of other things. For example, they're giving us great chronographs. <laughs> That's interesting because again, we see this problem with people not understanding the notion of a genre and not understanding that everything within a genre is going to look sort of similar despite not being identical and therefore not necessarily being a copy. We had the old ridiculous controversy between people that didn't see properly thinking that a Chronomaster Sport looks like a Daytona. To start with, the first Panda doll with the black bezel isn't actually a Daytona anyway. It wasn't uh, a Hoyer. And then that Hoyer has spawned all of these options. To say that one of the successors of that watch in that genre looks like another successor just ignores the reality of art, ignores the reality of design, and frankly doesn't make sense. Because if you look at this diagram, the Daytona and the, and the Chronomaster are actually very different watches within this genre. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is in thinking about watches, in thinking about what they are, we need to step back a little bit, slow down, and remember that watches are an example of a weird and almost unique example, probably along with architecture, of art colliding with design. And in that, it brings in all of the ideas of art and design, the ideas of genre, of trope, of expressing yourself, but within the bounds of what the audience want to buy. Don't be surprised then when you continue to see watches that people want to buy. And stop wanting people, stop wanting watch manufacturers to shoot themselves in the head and stop giving us what we want. That makes no sense. Okay, well this turned into much more of a rant than I expected it to be. Return fire, put your ideas in the comments below and we'll have a chat about it. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches. I will see you later. Bye.